the reason I think that something like EPAD provides the metadata but not the actual documentation because you can't just put that on the internet usually. Um, and m in most cases, the stuff that is coming to our library, um, they're giving us a copy of it to use, but they're maintaining copyright. It's very rare that the, the donor would transfer copyright and, and, and they out. wouldn't be able to transfer somebody else's copyright to us. And it's set out in the, in the it's like the Yes, it, that's part of the deed of gift. Or the purchase Sorry, agreement. That's what I was to say. <laughs> yeah. um, so I certainly don't mean this to be sort of antagonistic to you, and I think it's maybe just particularly in the New Zealand context something for us all to think about as we continue through the process of um, reviewing the Copyright Act. The process of making the copies of these emails that is an inherent part of bringing them into the collections technically it probably breaks copyright and I suppose there's a risk mitigation around that, mm -hmm. that we do it, we do all these things that you suggest to mm -hmm. um, mitigate that and all the normal things that we do to um, respect people's rights. Um, so it may be a case of advocating, I mean it's one of many areas where digital preservation butts up against the current contents of our Copyright Act, so maybe just something to think about for the broader room. While I've got a room full of experts on archives, I work in local government and one of our challenges is our end users don't really value information as well as I'd like them to. And so a lot of times we're losing stuff because they aren't putting it into the appropriate repositories. We had a discussion one day about emails in particular and the only way we could see where we would actually capture everything we wanted to was to capture every single email in and out of the organisation. And we don't really want to do that. What would your recommendations be on our approach to the collection part of it? Because if we don't collect it, there's nothing going to be there for you guys to archive later. So what would your recommendation be on how we manage the collection part of it in the first place? Um, yeah, I think there's I think there's definitely some resources that Archives New Zealand has for local government, possibly. Um, but I think the main thing too is just a lot of training and outreach and just changing people's mindset and, and getting them to realize that email is important and we have to be managing it in this way and, and seeing if you can set up guidelines so that way everybody is doing something consistently because as we've seen before everybody will have their different way of managing their email managing their folders managing labels um, so if you can have some sort of consistent approach in your organization it makes it much easier to manage long term but there's no easy way of doing that aside from just constantly talking to people and constantly reminding them and, and following up I, I guess uh, the other sort of part of that is is making it as easy as possible. Now, I can't take any ownership for this, but um, the records management team at University of Melbourne's done some really uh, interesting stuff integrating, I don't know how um, widely used HP Content Manager, previously Trim is in New Zealand. It's everywhere in Australia. Um, but integrating content manager with systems like uh, SharePoint and Outlook so that there are easy feeds into content manager, it won't give you the rich sort of metadata that, you know, formally registrating, registering something in an EDRMS will do, but it's at least captured. Um, yeah, so I think, I think to a certain extent there needs to be a, a middle ground meeting point otherwise you know this is the nature of EDRMSs and it's been like reported you know in various spheres that you know that you know EDRMSs can be great to um, sort of capture high level documents but they also can push records off into like little side areas and you know share drives and that sort of thing because of um, pretty much mostly because of user experience. <laughs> Um, I just want to say um, 
Thank you so much to all our speakers this afternoon. It's been really, really fascinating. And um, I'm sure there's still probably more questions, but we need to break for afternoon tea, and then we'll be back here about 20 past three. Thank you very much. <laughs>